I, I, I'm just got, I got my husband in the background going, what are you like? I just got ankle surgery. So I'm currently oh in bed right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. To, well, I don't know if I'm going to say I'm sorry to hear that or glad to hear that. I don't know if you're like better or worse than before. If there's, I will be better when it's all done, but uh, it's funny how you catch yourself when someone says, how are you doing? I'm fine. Don's like, what did you actually say? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's one of those things when people ask. I mean, sometimes people care and sometimes they don't. I know, I know, I know. It is true. We should break that though. Don't ask if you don't really want to know. Yeah, I used to work with a guy who was um, from Italy. I mean, like, you know, he was an older guy. And I mean, like yeah. from Italy, I mean, still yeah. like a strong accent. And you ask sure. him how he's doing and he would actually tell you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> how about that? Yeah, good old Giuseppe. Hey, Dave. Hey. So Dave, um, <laughs> Stephanie's here, but she's an attendee. And so <laughs> you are the host. So you can either bring her in or make me a host. Right. Um, remind me, because I'm never the host. Why am I the host for these? Because I, I you were the be first host. person from the town to join, probably. Oh, I should. I should be late. Um, so right. if you open up the uh, participants. Yeah, more, yep. Um. <clears throat> Remind me again, is that under my, under me and then more? Uh, go under participants, then panelists, you'll see my name. And then under more, it should be make, yeah, click um, the more next to my name. Gotcha. Yeah, I never want to be the... Um... I'm going to make you the host. Yeah, we thought you might end the meeting again quickly. Okay. There you go. You are not the host. Uh, promote to <laughs> panelist. Okay, so Stephanie should be in. Almost. I'm trying to decide, is this going to be a one chocolate meeting or a two chocolate meeting or three? <laughs> two. <laughs> Anna says two. Laura <laughs> says three. We'll see. So how I'm just going to wait for Stephanie to get on as a panelist, and then we'll get rolling. It says that she's being forced to rejoin as a panelist. <laughs> Hi, I'm here. I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to go off and log in again. I see okay, Leroy, I keep... Leroy is over there as well, right? If I'm in if I'm in the attendee mo mode, you just need to promote me to panelist, but it's not letting you do that? Correct. Um, I just did that for you, and I just did that for Leroy. Looks like Leroy went right in. Yeah, that's so weird. Why didn't it let me in? Did you... un? So you didn't just unmute me, you made me a panelist and it didn't put me into the room. I didn't, I've clicked promote to panelists like three times so far and then I just did make allowed to talk. So at least we could hear you now. Okay, all right. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off and get back in. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so hopefully everybody can just bear with us for another minute or two, um, just dealing with a couple of technical issues and then we will uh, get going here. Hey, Brett, this is Jen. Can you hear me? Yes, Jen. We oh, can good. hear you. I can't get my video to work. Um, hmm. but I'm here. Hi, okay, everyone. Good. <laughs> yeah. And we know mostly what you look like, so. Yeah, no major changes there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're not going to see us. I shaved off my beard completely, so. <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> Nice try. <laughs> uh, huh. so again, still just waiting for Stephanie here. <clears throat> no, she can't get on at all, I guess. My email. Oh, 
Um, so for those commissioners who are on right now, I just saw an email from Stephanie that has a copy of minutes in it. So before we get going, I don't see you, it's probably fine for us to take a look at minutes. If people haven't done that so far, haven't done that yet. Yeah, I don't see you, Stephanie, on either list. Oh, wait. Oh, there she is. Woohoo. <clears throat> All right, Stephanie, you did it. Almost. Success. <laughs> <laughs> Phew. Okay. We weren't quite sure where we we're going with that, but <laughs> I wasn't either. So, and then, okay, so we have you and I as co-hosts, and so we are live. Um, should we start the recording, Stephanie, and launch this? Yes. Oh, no, we already, we already are recording. It automatically, as soon as the meeting opens, it starts recording. Okay, so hopefully everybody realizes that we're recording and we didn't say anything too embarrassing yet. Okay, so good afternoon, or rather good evening, everyone. Uh, today is March 24th, 2021, and this is our bi-weekly meeting of the Amherst Conservation Commission. Uh, so starting off with comments from me, there are none. So uh, moving right along. Dave, do you want to go next? I tried to make sure that you had food in your mouth. So. Thank you, Brett. That was that third chocolate I talked about. Um, Laura said only two. Oh no, Anna said two. I think Anna said two. Laura said three. Laura so said I, went three. With, uh, I went with the higher number. <laughs> <laughs> um, should be enough caffeine for 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 this meeting and more. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't have any real big updates tonight. Um, there's a lot of kind of gearing up. This is the month that we kind of gear up. We're 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 getting. Um, we're doing a lot of advertising right now. We're going to be advertising for our summer staff. If you know, if any of the commission members know uh, people who would like to work on the trails at Buffer Pond this summer, you'll you'll see advertisements going out. Uh, should be next week. <clears throat> we're also going to be, as I mentioned before, we're going to be um, hiring some ambassadors uh, to work at Buffer Pond. Uh, we'll have some working at the recreation areas in town as well. So. Um, That'll be those will be going out and hitting hitting the airwaves next week. Um, we have our new, as I mentioned before, our new staff person, our new assistant land manager begins next week, Brendan Kelly, and he comes uh, highly recommended. So there'll be some some uh, orientation and acclimation next week. Um, so that should be good to get Brad some more help. <clears throat> I, we had a staff meeting today, a virtual staff meeting, and some of the things I was talking about, you know, as, as we come out of the pandemic year of, of 2020 and, and things get better and, and more open and we're able to be back, hopefully, um, meeting, you know, in different ways, uh, in person and out in the field. You know, I would love for, and I said this to Stephanie and Brad, and um, we'll reiterate it to Erin when she comes back, but I'd just like to see 2021 be, you know, kind of have us, the commission and the staff be out in the field more, looking at issues, looking at management, um, more field visits. Um, I told Brad that, you know, I really want him coming in and doing reports to you about field work. Um, I think it would be really helpful if you heard directly from him and not kind of filtered through me uh, and do a, use a lot of visuals, what's happening out there, because Honestly, I'm not in the field weekly. There are some times where I don't get out in the field for three to four weeks. So um, I've asked him to, to really kind of gear up to, to bring you PowerPoint presentations and, um, and other uh, visual uh, uh, presentations to, to kind of show you what's going on in the field. I am actually going in the field tomorrow um, and I'll be looking at, we'll be looking at, Brad and I will be actually going out with our building commissioner, Rob Mora, and um, Rob is a very experienced developer in, in another life of his. So we're going to be looking at the Stanley Street parking lot, the Sweet Alice parking lot, 
and the um, Ritchie parking lot on Bay Road. So two access points on Bay Road. And then if you're familiar with the Stanley Street parking lot, it's just, it's a moonscape over there near the baseball field. And it's a very heavily used um, uh, area. There's a lot of runoff that goes there. Clearly it would, it would probably be a notice of intent. Um, we'd have to do some measurement to see how far we are from the Fort River. Might be a, a request. But in any event, um, there's some things that have been on our list. And now that Brad and Brendan are full time in um, conservation, uh, we can start knocking off some of these projects that are a little larger, a little more expensive, and have been on our list for years. Um, what else is going on? So access, I think um, I hear time and time again at meetings, you know, if you know, if you know where to go, you know where to park, but not everybody knows where you can park and where you can't. And so we need to we need to do better. We have four or five kiosks that we ordered last year during the pandemic. Actually, we're able to um, use CARES Act money to buy those kiosks. So we'll be uh, deploying those kiosks and trying to get a more consistent uh, presence and message out there. Um, I'd also like to look at, and these are I'm just kind of some of my goals for 21. I'd actually like to look at new signage for our conservation areas. Um, we're doing some research, Angela Mills in my office is doing some research kind of um, New England wide and getting some different examples of signs and we'll share some of this with you. But you know, Mass Audubon, the trustees of reservations do a really nice job. Um, our signs are nice, they're, they're homemade, we make them in house, um, but they get broken a lot. Um, visually, they're a little tough to see. They're, they're not really, they face the street and most conservation area signs you can see coming from both directions on the road. So coming up with some different ideas for that that we can afford without breaking the bank is kind of one of my 21 goals. Um, finally, just a quick update. We, you know, we did submit with Mickey Marcus's help uh, the boardwalk grant to the Mass DCR, Department of Conservation and Recreation. Uh, you recall that Mickey came in and did a presentation on this. This would be a, a, a boardwalk extending from the Norwatic Trail east out into the marsh off of Station Road. Again, it would, it would require a notice of intent, et cetera, et cetera. But we did submit that grant. I'm expecting to hear word fairly soon on that, so we will keep you posted. Um, I don't recall the number off the top of my head, but um, I, I should have looked that up before. I want to say it was might have been north of, of $200,000 for that. So we'll see if we get that. And our goal would be to use the, um, I believe they're called helical piers, the piers that you essentially drill into the marsh, very little impact. Um, DEP likes them. Um, and they last forever, so that's nice. Um, but very little impact to wetlands. So lots of goal setting right now and looking ahead toward the field season. So happy to take any questions or comments. Uh, I, I continue to see people getting out there with the warm weather. I mean, the trails are, wow, they are being used. People are everywhere. Um, so it's nice to see, but it, Sometimes areas do get a little overused, so it's nice to spread out. Yeah, great, thank you, Dave. <clears throat> um, and specifically in regards to getting summer help, if you're interested in getting advertisements out, particularly to UMass, let me know um, and I can distribute it there. Um, but yeah, that sounds like great stuff. Uh, I agree with you, Dave, there is a lot of activity out in a lot of those lands. Well, there's some lands there's a lot of activity and some lands absolutely none. Yeah, it was interesting. I took a hike with family on um, Sunday, I think it was, of this past weekend. And we went by the Notch Visitor Center up on 116, and it was packed. There must have been 100 cars there. So we went down to Sweet Alice on Bay Road. There was one other car, and we hiked up on the range from Sweet Alice. We maybe saw six people. Mm -hmm. Had we parked up at the Notch Visitor Center, I mean... It was, you know, it's a very popular place, but there's so many more ways to get kind of off the beaten path on the range. And uh, I think we need to do a little bit better uh, job of educating people and giving them alternatives. So yeah, and soon we'll have the old trolley line uh, be one more access point. 
Yeah, we were on it. It's gorgeous. If you haven't been there, that would be a great going to Epstein Pond and the old trolley line would be a great uh, field trip for the commission. I'd love to do that later this spring. I will leave you with one interesting email I had late in the day today. Um, Stephanie knows about this. We actually had a report from somebody who lives over near Gull Pond and they were asking about a couple of things. The first was, do we allow motorized boats? Apparently somebody put in a, a boat there fishing with a motor. And, and that was the first in my career with the town. I've never seen anyone, maybe it was a trolling motor. Either way, we discourage, strongly discourage motors in any of our ponds, but I have never heard of anybody using a motor, motor boat, if you will, on that pond. The other thing is Brad did such a nice brush, job brush hogging the, the under, undergrowth there, and, and it all grows up uh, you know, later this summer. It'll be a beautiful field. But people are now driving their trucks and cars right down to the water's edge to fish. So you kind of run into this. It's a catch-22 when you try to keep early successional habitat open, and and uh, and it it kind of backfires on you some sometimes in the in the way of access. So anyway, Brad's going to keep an eye on uh, Gull Pond, which is more and more popular these days. So yeah. that's great, and that is kind of crazy that people are putting bo um, yeah, particularly motorized boats. So we'll see a power boat out there one day. That'll be funny. So any questions or comments for Dave? <clears throat> okay, so uh, not hearing any. Um, so Stephanie, the floor is yours. Hi, I just wanted to say, first of all, um, that this is my last meeting filling in for Aaron. So um, it's really been a pleasure working with you all. And I know you will be very happy to have her back because <laughs> um, I'm sure she's really, um, you know, as much as she's loving her time with her son, she's so dedicated. I know that Erin really likes doing her job. So I know she'll be happy to be back with you. Um, and I just wanted to say that your next meeting, <laughs> I'm so sorry, is crazy loaded. I mean, you have so many applications that have come in um, all at once. So it's going to be um, a pretty hefty agenda. So I'm going to do everything that I can to prep things for Erin ahead of time so that she can just focus on getting to the meat of the applications and really diving in and preparing them for for you all. So that's about all I have. Um, I just had the ECAC meeting, ECAC meeting just before this one. So I'm trying to shift gears in my head a little bit. So I apologize. I don't have a whole lot to to say beyond that. Yeah, no worries. But on behalf of the whole commission, um, a very deep, deep thank you. Um, so we have no idea where we would be without you. Um, <clears throat> obviously, yeah, it'd be great to have Aaron back. Um, but it's been really great to have you. And I'm sure you'll be happy to go back to a single job. Yes, <laughs> yes, I will. But it's been a, honestly, I mean it sincerely. It's really been a pleasure and an honor to work with you all. So thank you. So thank you. Okay, um, so why don't we keep moving along? Um, so the thing that we have next on our agenda are minutes. And so that came through um, a little while ago. And so if you uh, have not had a chance to look at those, if you could crack those open and... We'll share the screen as well so that you can Great. read along. So when commissioners are done, we're looking for a motion to accept minutes. I move we accept the minutes of March 10th, 2021. Seconded. Okay, looking for a voice vote. Anna? Aye. Leroy? Aye. Uh, well, actually, uh, I think, according to this, you were not there. So I think you need to abstain. So is that okay? Abstain. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think Laura and yeah, 
Yeah. So Brett, do we need a new second? Uh, no, I think he can still second. Oh, cool. Okay, great. Right? Yeah, I mean, they're just minutes. We're good. At it. <laughs> so Jen, how do you vote? Uh, I, sorry. Uh, Laura? Oops, sorry. Aye. Uh, no, you have to abstain. <laughs> so no, I asked, but then I said no. So I apologize for that. Um, and I for me as well. So those minutes do pass. So we can move on. <clears throat> um, so I don't have 7.30 yet on my clock. So we'll have to wait until that time before we can start our 7.30 hearing. Um, but we can move down into some of our other business items that we might be able to take care of now. Um, Stephanie, do you have any preferences for what we deal with first? Sorry, I'm just looking at um, time and what we have. Um, Could we potentially do the certificate of, of compliance? Um, there's probably going to be a bit of a presentation with that, so we might not okay. want to go with that one. Sorry. Oh, my computer's doing weird things. I'm sorry. Um, I would say we could go with, um, well, I, I guess, you know, whatever we do, we'll just sort of bump everything else back a little bit. We could start with the certificate of compliance. It just might bump up other things along a okay. little bit. Yep. Um, well, if we're going to, if I didn't realize that there was a formal presentation for that one. So if that's the case, um, could we just start with the informal discussion then? Um, sure. With other source? Sure. So um, Simon, I'm assuming you're going to speak to this. So I'm going to let you in the room. So just give me a minute. Okay. Welcome, Simon. And uh, you might need to unmute yourself there. Zoom is doing funny things Here. today. Here, let me, I'm going to promote Simon to a panelist. Maybe that will help. Okay, Simon, you should, I think you just muted yourself again. Unmute. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I don't, for some reason we cannot unmute. Maybe we're just allowed to mute people. Yeah, you'll have to unmute yourself. Which I guess that makes sense. No, well, maybe Simon isn't actually there. No, Simon's, well, I'm not or, sure. Like maybe he stepped away from his computer. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, Simon, if you are handed, if you are here, if you can use the little raise hand thing. I can, um, Steve, okay. I can, Steve from GZA, can I, I'm going to allow you to talk. Hello? We can hear you. Hi, Steve, we can hear you. Okay, fine. Yeah, it's the, I know Simon was going to be on, um, but I think we were originally later in the agenda, so perhaps he's, you know, eating dinner or something. <laughs> yeah, you're not a timed <laughs> item, so. Yeah, so um, I mean, I can I can speak to uh, you know Simon and I have been working on this, so I think I can speak to it. Ste I had sent Stephanie uh, this evening a um, a request for uh, administrative change and corrected order of conditions for the Eversource MFRP project. And just to give you a little history on this, I know uh, that uh, back in October. We had submitted a, an NOI, and that was approved, uh, I believe, in November. We came back uh, for a couple of amendments at that time. Um, I think one was in December and one was in January. If you recall, uh, one was related to a mitigation site, and the other was re related to additional tree removal. 
So we received uh, an amended uh, order at that time. So we have approval to do structure replacement along the um, uh, 1144, 1033 line, uh, you know, in your in, in Amherst. And that was all, basically we're happy. We said, okay, we have an NOI, we're ready to get started. Um, simultaneously, we submitted a 401 application to DEP and DEP noticed that on the form, the form five, the order of conditions form, the numbers that were pres that were written in there didn't actually match what was on the maps or in the narrative that we had presented to you and that you had approved. So, you know, we went through all the maps and all the tables and you had given your approval, but when the form five was issued as the order of conditions, those numbers didn't didn't match what was in the what you had actually approved. So DEP basically came back and said, "Hey, you have to correct that form to to make sure it matches what you actually approved." So one of the things we're asking for is basically an accounting. It's basically an accounting exercise, and we're asking that you at the next meeting. Uh, in April, or April 14th is the next, when we would appear formally. We would ask that you would just, uh, you would approve what, basically what already has been approved, but just approve those numbers and make sure they're properly uh, set on the form. So we've gone through and actually done that in this submission. Uh, and so it's, it's there for you to review it. You know, we can go through it with Stephanie because there's a lot of numbers and it's, you know, it's all, it, it's a little bit complicated to, to try and uh, figure it out. But um, so that's, that's one item is actually just putting the num the proper numbers on that form. The DP is very, yeah, it's, it, their opinion, even though you have referenced the document, uh, all the documents that we submitted, like the maps and the tables and the narratives, uh, in your order, it's DEP's opinion that it actually those numbers actually need to appear on the form. Otherwise, whatever doesn't appear on the form is technically not valid. Okay. Okay. So with those, Steve, there um, I understand that there. It sounds like there are a fair number of small changes that need to be made just so things sync up. Are there any substantive changes that will impact uh, particular resources? Yeah, so the second the second part of that uh, of our request is related to um, a few additional wetland areas that um, we've identified since the original order of conditions was approved. So basically what we do is um, you know, we flag the wetlands back in the summer. Um, and then in October, we got your approval based on the wetland lines. Before we start construction, we, we always go out and reflag the wetlands near the work areas so that the, con so that the contractors don't accidentally go into the wetland areas that they're not supposed to go into. During that time, uh, you know, the original flagging was done during the drought season. So we went back out in, I believe it was November, December timeframe. And the uh, wetlands, uh, there were a few additional wetlands that were not picked up in the first delineation. Okay, so that we presented uh, in our package as additional areas that we want you to look at. Um, there's not, a, there's not a significant amount of impact. It's all temporary impact associated with uh, the work. It's the same work that you already approved. It's just that there are a few additional wetland areas that were not originally identified in the October mapping. And Steve, are you gonna be requesting that we verify those boundaries as well or just the order of conditions? 
I think just the order of conditions that, I mean, that's kind of the way it was done the first time. Uh, DEP is going to be doing a verification on their own. Uh, you're certainly welcome to do that, but we're not request, specifically requesting mm -hmm. requesting that. Um, we could provide you photos and uh, we've provided a wetland data form for the, for the additional wetland one of the additional wetlands that you'll be looking at. So we're not specifically requesting for a boundary confirmation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and all of those changes are additions. There's no subtractions that you're considering at this point. Correct. There are no subtractions. Although there is one area where we had gravel for a work pad and we've changed 75% of that gravel work pad to temporary matting. Okay. So it's actually a reduction, a little bit of a reduction uh, because we identified this additional wetland. We didn't want to permanently impact it. So we, we went with matting instead of, instead of gravel as we had originally proposed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. So that's kind of what it is. Uh, the package I sent is, is you know, it's, it's fairly large, but I just kind of, you know, we try to boil it down as simple as possible. As, you know, under the Wetlands Protection Act, that's difficult sometimes because of all the numbers that need to be reported. Um, and so those are the two main items. And the, there's a third item. The third item is uh, related to you know, we provided, uh, uh, I believe, a total of $66,000 in funding to mitigate for tree impacts, if you recall that. Um, some of that money was going towards uh, some poles for Amethyst Brook uh, that we're using for a, a bridge or a fence, some fencing, signage, et cetera. Some of that money was allocated towards that. Some of the money it was stated as being going towards conservation projects in town, which, you know, which is, which is good. And then that's what it's for. Um, DP has, uh, we've been talking to them and, you know, we need approval from DP for these tree impacts. So they've requested that we get more specific on how that money is being allocated for those resource projects. Like they want to be comfortable that it's being put towards something that is actually is like a conservation or preservation or a restoration effort. And they would like to see, you know, what the project is, where it is, is there a schedule for doing that work? You know, I, so I know you've got, you've got money in the coffer. Part of it is what we, whatever source has contributed. They, you know, we, and we could probably work with Stephanie on this or, or and Aaron um, on, you know, what that money is intended to be used for, what the projects are and what the schedules are, so that we can allay concerns of DEP. Um, they're not concerned that it's going to go into some general fund and get lost because it's going to it's going to your group, you know, but they just want to say, okay, it's it's allocated to a specific project and this project is slated to occur at a certain time frame, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Okay. Um, so that was the third piece. Anything else, Steve? And I think Simon might be back with us now as well. I'm here. Oh, uh, we sent out a butter notifications. Um, so that's all that, that that's for the, for those new wetland areas. Just to be safe, you know, we sent those out just so that people are informed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Simon, do you have anything that you want to add? Um, so we had to juggle um, our schedule a little bit, so I apologize for going earlier than you may have thought we were going. I'm trying to dial in right now. Well, maybe Simon's not really there. Okay, uh, so we definitely, oh, we, somebody's raising their hand. Dave, Dave's raising his hand. Oh, okay. So, 
Um, so Dave, and yeah, so if we can get comments from Dave and Stephanie on this, that would be great. Yeah, so um, the only thing I would comment on is the last point that was made about the mitigation funds. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's something that really I'm gonna need to work with Erin on when she gets back, uh, which is really about a week away or so. Um, rest assured those funds are, are not going in the general fund. They are in special accounts by the department. So there is no worry that those will get cobbled up and used for anything other than conservation of the projects. Uh, we can work, uh, I can work closely with Aaron and uh, the folks on this call, you know, to, to make sure we provide DEP with any information that they need to, you know, to move this forward. But those funds are securely with the and they are not going to be used for any other purpose. Just wanted to reassure everybody about that. Excellent. Hi, good evening. This is Simon Hilt. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, now we can hear you, Simon. Yes. Okay. So, sorry that I'm uh, jumping in uh, after we started here. I thought we were not going to be on until past 7.45. So um, I uh, am just coming back from dinner, so I missed what has been said so far. I just got the little, last little bit about uh, the mitigation piece of it. But um, I think, as Steve was saying there, in addition to uh, the funds that have already been contributed to the Conservation Commission's efforts, um, DEP, I think, as Steve mentioned, uh, because there was not fully a project with a, uh, a concrete schedule and scope already realized. Um, when we were going for our 401 water quality cert, they basically said, we, we wanna make sure that um, impacts are fully mitigated for. So we're working with, um, we've reached out to a few different uh, land organizations. Kestrel Trust is one of them, uh, Nature Conservancy is another. So basically to see if they have um, projects that are sort of on the shelf that we can that we can assist with uh, to assist uh, to mitigate for our impacts under the 401 water quality cert but uh, DEP was very clear that they do not they, they recognize that the orders that we've received from each of the commissions so far are final and they don't intend to meddle with those but they just wanted to make sure that uh, that they're getting the, the mitigation that they they see is required okay Dave Yes, yeah, Simon, so that's intriguing to me. So are you being required to mitigate beyond any projects related to the funds that were donated? It it sounds that way um, because there because DEP didn't have a specific project that the commission had already committed to and had laid out that they could say, um, yes, everything's all set for, for um, the, the tree removals. They want to ensure that um, that appropriate mitigation is being conducted. And because the project is on a, a schedule where we really, uh, I don't think, have the, the time to potentially realize um, actual, you know, take a conceptual mitigation project to something that is more concrete and tangible, uh, we're, we're just going ahead, and going ahead and taking that route of, of just working with DEP to, to uh, look at some other options for providing mitigation. And what we're, what we're looking at um, mainly is Kestrel is looking at um, acquiring some land to put into conservation restrictions. So that's, that's the route that we're, we're taking there. They, they recognize that each of the commissions definitely you know, has projects that they're working on that will be beneficial, um, but they have, uh, there's the potential for our project to be held up uh, if they don't have something in front of them that they feel is more tangible. So we're we're just kind of being proactive to to put some put forth something a little extra for them. Okay, yeah, um, that's intriguing. I would, yeah. I, in retrospect, I wish you would actually reached out to us because, um, and we work with Kestrel all the time. But since this is an Amherst project and an Amherst impact, um, if DEP is asking for you know, um, you know, something above and beyond the funds being committed in timeline, which we can we can put forth that. Um, yeah, it would just be too bad to work on something that's outside of Amherst. So I, I don't. Yeah. Well, I, I, what our what our position is, you know, the the commission and and I'm coming into the project late. Of course, this is my first time coming before the commission here, um, but. 
uh, you know, our position is that the the project had has come before the commission. This has all been worked out before my my involvement here. So as far as what you all have negotiated, what would be appropriate for mitigation, I think that that chapter is sort of closed, and um, and the, the the mitigation that we're pursuing with DEP is separate. And because it's through the 401 Water Quality Center program, they have some flexibility as far as geography goes. So that's why that's that's even an option there. Mm-hmm. But please do think of it as as um, you know above and beyond rather than in, in lieu of something that's lacking here in Amherst. Sure, sure, yep. yeah. Again, yeah, my yeah, my only point is, yeah, sometimes people go to Kestrel and Kestrel covers 19 towns and we'd love to see the mitigation be in, in the town of Amherst where the impacts are. Oh, lost, uh, your, lost your audio, David. Yep, you want to unmute or something, Dave? Oh, I was just saying, again, sometimes people tend to to reach out to Kestrel when the town owns 3,000 acres of conservation land in Amherst, where we clearly could, could, you know, we have projects that are mitigation worthy and probably mitigation ready. Um, but um, that's fine. I'm not, I, I don't want to throw a wrench yeah. at you. Yeah. Be, being that you know the, the project is the way that it has to be run is through uh, a series of coordinated and uh, scheduled outages of the transmission line. So we we really have no time to spare. So that's why we reached out to these groups that ho- in hopes that they already had something that had a, a concrete scope and schedule that we could uh, basically help fund to, to to be able to move forward here. So gotcha. next time. Okay. So thank you, Simon. Thank you, Dave. Um, Stephanie, do you have any comments on particularly the first two parts of what Steve was presenting? So I assume that this will probably fall under Aaron's purview. And then Aaron Aaron will be going through that in detail and then she'll be able to report back to us uh, on the April 14th meeting. Yes, so I'll be working with Erin um, on all of the applications that are coming in and giving her uh, background. But um, I had had a meeting with um, the folks at GZA and I also had several conversations with David Fowlis. So we came up with the idea that it would be best for them to submit a request for an amended order of conditions, which is the application that came in. I haven't seen it quite fully yet, um, but that came in today. So that would be scheduled for the meeting on the 14th. So Aaron will be back for the meeting on the 14th. Okay, excellent. So um, do any of the commissioners have any comments? I mean, this is more just for informational purposes. This will come back um, before us next time for a formal hearing. And and if I could, I apologize for for repeating uh, anything that Steve has already said here, but just want to make sure that the point is conveyed. Um, The the main purpose of the the order, or sorry, the request for amended order here is to essentially get the um, the alterations that were included in one form or another in the not- notice of intent package, um, whether they were included in the narrative or on the plans. Um, we, we feel that you know it was presented for before the commission and it was approved, but for whatever reason we we didn't uh, appropriately uh, get it conveyed onto the actual form. And so DEP we feel like was it seemed like they were reaching out to to just let us know. Um, that, hey, what you appear to be proposing for activities here don't seem to be fully covered on your order of conditions. So that's why we're coming back to make sure that we do have all of the, you know, the appropriate aerial extensive work that were conveyed through the notice of intent actually on the form. That's that's the main part. And then the other piece that I'm sure Steve did touch on is um, during the reflagging or refreshing flags uh, this spring, there were a couple of other resources that were identified. And so we just want to clarify that those are on the maps. There's no new uh, work work um, that's proposed as far as alterations with any resource areas or even buffer zones. So it should be pretty straightforward, but just wanted to come back and get it straightened out. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, Simon. And thank you, Steve. Uh, Again, any commissioners have any comments or if there's anybody from the public who would like to ask a question or make a comment, you can use the raise hand feature. Okay, so um, not seeing anything else. Uh, we will see you, Simon, and you, Steve, in a few weeks. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so I have 7.45 by my clock, so that means that we can go ahead with our 7.30 agenda item. 
And so if you are here for that, if you want to raise your hand and then um, Stephanie can make you a panelist and I will formally open this. <clears throat> this meeting is being held as required by the provisions of chapter 131, ch section 40 of the general laws of the Commonwealth and act relative to the protections of wetlands as most recently amended in article 3.31 Wetlands Protection Under the Town of Amherst General Bylaws. This is, again, a request for termination um, that's being presented by the Berkshire Design Group for the Town of Amherst for construction of an addition to the North Amherst Library located at 8 Montague Road, Map 5A, Parcel 38. Hey, Brad, I just want to clarify, you had said it was 745, but we're doing the 730 agenda item. I just noticed the folks who are jumping in or ah okay or, thank I you am with college people yep 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 so yeah and i apologize it's kind of and thank you anna it's kind of i should have just said that it's past 7 30 so this <laughs> is 7 30 agenda item and it just happened to be another time for one of the other ones which I no didn't. worries so we're looking for berkshire design group and north amherst library folks right now yep so that is michael lou and so promote to panelist michael and then i got him and then Kate and um, Kenny, we're going to put you back into the general pool for just a few minutes. And then we'll bring you back when your time is here. OK, so welcome, Michael. Nice to see you. It feels like it's been a while. Um, <laughs> Thanks for having me back. And so, Michael, if you wouldn't mind uh, introducing yourself and then giving us some background on your project. Sure. Um, yep. I am Michael Liu with the Berkshire Design Group in Northampton. Um, working for the town, the library uh, committee. Um, Guilford Mooring from DPW is our contact on this project. Um, we are working with Kuhn Riddle Architects, who I don't believe they're joining in tonight for this um, hearing. We've already been to the planning board, uh, round one with the planning board, and are due back um, April, I can't remember the date, April 7th or 10th or something, whatever that meeting is. Um, so this is a request for determination. Um, we're proposing work and um, I guess I could, I should share screen now, but we are proposing work that um, uh, for an addition to the existing library on the north side of the building and then a new parking lot also on the north side. And let's see. I can find it right there. Okay. There we go. Okay, great. So this um, kind of black and white plan, um, can you see the, my, the little hand? Yes. Okay. So this, I should maybe blow that up uh, just a bit. This um, little rectangle here is the existing library building and this is the addition. There's a connector on the north side to a rectangular shaped addition. It's primarily going to house a, um, a meeting room, um, stairs that come up into the existing library, and a lift, a wheelchair lift, uh, accessible restrooms, and a custodial closet in this corner. Um, this would be the entrance into the addition. The entrance on the south side, as you know, is here. You go up a set of steps, that would remain the same. There's really no work on the south side of the site, which is this, you know, um, rectangular piece. Um, so you would enter um, the library if you came into park here from uh, the new parking lot, which um, includes 10 parking spaces. Um, and then to the north of that, we are proposing, th this is basically this, the site to the north is also owned by the town. Um, it is basically like 98 or 99% paved or impervious with the building and it's basically paved all the way around. This kind of hatched area indicates uh, to the north of the new parking indicates pavement that would be taken away and replaced with a swale to, you know, for the uh, runoff from the new parking and runoff from the existing site here, um, which flows from uh, north to south. So runoff from this former garage or gas station parcels flowing in this direction and runoff from the new parking lot at the library is flowing in this direction. So we'd end up with a swale here and with a catch basin right about where that dot is on the, um, the leader there. And, and then we make that connection back to an existing catch basin in Sunderland Road. 
Um, I just want to quickly show um, a couple architectural renderings just to give you an idea. This was prepared by Kuhn Riddle. This is the view of the addition from the um, looking south from the new parking lot. Um, in the background here with the red colored roof and the yellow um, siding is the existing building and this is the addition. Um, they've got, let me see if I can. And this is kind of, this is just an elevational um, perspective from um, Montague Road, from the Montague Road side. This being the existing building and the connector and then to the new addition here, um, you know, with, which faces north to the parking lot. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So our work here is completely out of any resource areas in, in the red. Um, highlight is shown the 100 year floodplain from the Mill River, which comes down here and actually includes this commercial plaza and comes down here and into the um, that open athletic field um, at Sunderland Road. This dashed heavy dash red line represents the approximate 200 foot riverfront from the Mill River up here. Um, this, this, the area of work is completely out of these uh, resource areas. Um, so we're basically asking for a negative determination um, that this project's not going to impact um, uh, the resource areas. Mm -hmm. By definition, we have a reduction in the amount of pavement uh, due to this area, the pavement being removed and the grass swale being put in. Um, if I guess that's it. If you have any specific questions or anything, I'd be happy to um, answer them or listen to comments that you have. Excellent. So thank you, Michael. Uh, yeah, it seems pretty straightforward, at least from, you know, first glance, I agree that it looks like it's, you know, outside of jurisdiction. But um, so Stephanie, do you have any comments to kick us off? I do not. Okay. Um, do any of the commissioners have any thoughts or questions on this? Oh, Dave. Yeah, thanks, Mike. This is very helpful. Um, and yeah, I, I, I agree with, with Brad and others that this appears to be, you know, out of the resource area. I guess my one question is, um, so could you say a little bit more about the swale? Because um, so the, the catch basin that the runoff from the library and then the former ga garage will go into, I then that I think is a pretty direct outlet into the Mill River, correct? To the north? Yeah, um, hold, let me zoom in a little bit on that. You can still see the screen there? Yes. Okay, so basically this, this, is, this is the approximate property line that divides the two parcels. Both are owned by the town. Um, I should just mention that we are planning or to do an A and R to move that property line so it doesn't go through the addition. Um, but basically, you know, this whole area, this, this, this parcel to the north is basically paved right up to about where that line is. That's where the existing parking ex um, sits. So we're taking the existing parking and, you know, pulling it back to, you know, this line here where the sidewalk is shown. Um, but basically, in existing conditions, the runoff from um, this parcel runs on the bottom half or the south southern part from south to north and from the northern part of the site runs north to south. So they converge in here and run out. See that little square right there on the in the gutter line of Sunderland Road? That's the existing catch basin, David. And we're piping, proposing to pipe into that structure. And then from there, it does flow to the north and I believe you're right. It does daylight into the Mill River. Um, I'm not, you know, probably at the um, um, the bridge that goes over Sunderland Road, somewhere in there. We've um, we've talked to DPW and Jason Skeels um, about this, and um, they're basically said we don't have to um, treat the water because we're doing a reduction in the pavement, 
and the town has a um, a SWIP basically that covers the drainage, you know, from the municipal system. Um, I will say that in the future, if you are aware that of the proposed realignment of Sunderland Road, um, so at some point, you know, I mean, they've been looking at this for a little while now, but there's no concrete plans. But the idea is that Sunderland, they're planning to, or the town wants to reroute Sunderland Road after you come over the Mill River over here and make a connection to Montague Road, either with some type of T intersection or a, or a small roundabout or what have you. At that point in time, there's going to be further work, maybe on um, the, um, is that Ernie's Towing that uses this land, I think? I, I'm not sure who the owner is of this parcel uh, up here, but it's Ernie's Garage. And um, so the road is going to come through here some in some location. And at that time, this whole parcel, you know, would be the, the garage would be demolished and we we're actually probably going to get a lot of green space out of it, um, which is a great thing. But um, that that issue with the drainage was brought up with the planning board also. And Guilford, I mean, we were charged with basically, you know, they said, don't worry about the don't don't even consider the road realignment. At that time, we're going to you know, there's going to be drainage improvements. There's going to be green space. This section of Sunderland Road in all likelihood will be closed off where from wherever it turns to this curb cut and we'd have basically like a kind of like another sweetster park situation in this in north amherst here um and they're you know they've they've been talking about various things about even turning this into a more pedestrian oriented way so that there's um easier cross traffic if you will uh, pedestrian cross traffic between the library and the you know, the school, I'm not sure if this is still being used as a school or not, but it's a, you know, municipal building. So at that time, they were talking about, you know, doing further drainage um, improvements and potentially incorporating um, more of a, uh, or turning this pro into a, even a rain garden um, feature so that it does, it does more than just direct water to a, to a catch basin. Thank, thanks, Mike. No, I'm, I'm very familiar. I, I actually bought the gas station for the town, um, so I know it well. Uh -huh. uh, but um, so, so for now, it's a vegetated swale. Just let me ask one yes, other yes. question, just, just because I'm, I'm kind of anticipating. I realize we're kind of, um, we, we don't want to get too far afield here because this is a ways from resource area. But sure. there, there were conversations since, since you do have the vegetated swale on there. Um, um, there were conversations I know fairly recently that that the parking you're showing doesn't really uh, isn't adequate for the size of the space in the North Amherst Library. So has that been addressed, or is that I, I just want to make sure we know, we are looking we are looking at that, and mm -hmm. and we were hoping that we would be able to provide you know, I guess what we call overflow parking at the uh, former school parcel over here. You, here's where the curb cut is. You know, I think there's approximately 12 parking spaces in here. There's potentially um, evening overflow if the meeting room is gonna be used in the plaza. And even though that's a separate property, uh, we made a, a presentation or argument that we're on a bus line. This is the bus stop right here on Montague Road. Um, Sure. I, mean, I don't want to take up more of the commission's time. I'm just, I'm just raising it. Sure. If you need to address that on the site. You would come back to the commission. So thanks. If, okay. The other, well, I'll, I'll mention that the most, um, I guess, extreme solution would be to add parking up here so that this was a double loaded lot. In that case, it's likely that the green space would move up closer to the former garage building. Um, and then the other idea was to use this parcel here for overflow because it's all paved around the building, although, you know, people would have to maneuver around it. So there are ideas being tossed around. Um, we are looking at this, this idea of a double loading um, the parking lot here because that would require, you know, more design work, obviously, on our part. Um, but there, you know, there's various options on the table and um, we're working with Guilford about with that right now but if this becomes more paving obviously 
the green space would have to move um, to the to the north. Sure. Um, and, and, and I don't want to belabor this because sure. I know the commission has other things. I just in in a time when we are, you know, we're 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 working on sustainability issues all over the over, all over the town. E even calling it a pavement elimination green space, is it a is it a swale? Is it a vegetated swale that is meant to filter before it goes into the um, catch basin? Um, so I'm just raising it as you okay. know we're we're trying not to put more runoff into rivers, right? Direct runoff, unfiltered direct runoff into rivers, and I'm just. Just making the point that you know, in the future, as we look at this site, you know, the Mill River is a stone's throw north. So I just, you know, just want to make the point. That, you know, the town will need to step up, I think, and and I'll certainly be part of that effort as we look at the reuse of the former garage. So thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Definitely, yeah, stuff that we'll have to deal with uh, sometime in the future. So any other comments or questions, or if there's comments or questions from the public, you can raise your hand. Okay, so not hearing anything from the commission, I assume that um, everybody's okay with this, in which case we are looking for a negative determination, a motion for a negative determination. Okay. <laughs> um, I can, Stephanie, can you remind, I'm doing yes. a motion for a negative determination. Is that for, all? For the work. Okay. So um, I move to find a negative determination for the uh, Berkshire Design Group for the town of Amherst in the construction of the addition to the North Amherst Library at 8 Montague Road. I can add. Thank you. Excellent. So looking for a voice vote. Anna? Aye. Leroy? Aye. Laura? Aye. Jen? Aye. And aye for me as well. So Michael, thank you very much. I'm sure we'll see you again soon, but for this thank one, you. we are all set. All right. Appreciate it. Have a good evening. You as well. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Bye, Mike. Okay. So moving on to uh, our next agenda item, uh, which on the agenda says 7.40 p.m. Um, and Stephanie, um, so I know that this is Poor Farm. Is this a new, are we opening up the NOI tonight or is this a continuation? No, so, so it's not a continuation because you didn't open a hearing. Everything that you okay. addressed before was under an enforcement situation. Mm -hmm. So this is actually an application for the agricultural piece. Um, but I think you're, we don't have a complete, we don't have all the materials. So I think you're going to um, only just open, I think um, David Haynes is here to make a quick statement, but then you're going to continue. Excellent. Sounds good. So let me formally open it and then we shall do that. This hearing is being held as required by provisions of chapter 131, section 40 of the general laws of the Commonwealth and act relative to the protection of the wetlands as most recently amended and article 3.31 wetlands protection under the town of Amherst general bylaws. And so David, if you could introduce yourselves, introduce yourself and give us some background about this specific NOI and how it ties into other things that are going on in that property, that'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, thank you. Good evening. Um, uh, yes, this, my, my name is David Haynes with Haynes Hydrogeologic Consulting, uh, my company. I've been doing it for about, uh, I don't know, 37 years uh, and been consulting for 40 plus. Um, I did a job for you guys last fall reviewing the delineation over off of uh, 116 uh, where Sunderland Road comes out. I did that for you. Um, I haven't been too much before the commission for the last 15 or 20 years, but before that, I, I spent a fair amount of time before you. I'm on the Belchertown Conservation Commission uh, for 33 years, and um, I'm a hydrogeologist by training. I'm uh, here representing this project. Uh, I'm working with uh, Meredith Borenstein um, and on the restoration as you know, under the enforcement order, there was some alteration uh, to the wetlands and inadvertently trying to reshape the uh, shape of the fields. And so we have, she has put together a restoration plan. And I've 
at one meeting there's some confusion there was at one meeting it was it was you wanted to have uh, a notice of intent submitted for the restoration plan and their future agricultural work so we have prepared a notice of intent uh, to do both of those things one includes the restoration plan and the other includes the the uh, agricultural part of it um, in speaking, this is also in an endangered species area so that it needs to uh, go before natural heritage. And it is, it is before natural heritage, they are reviewing uh, both the restoration and they will be reviewing the agricultural aspects. In order to simplify the project and the recommendation of Mark Stenson, uh, Stephanie found out that it would be much cleaner and much better to pull the restoration plan back to the uh, enforcement order alone and pull it out of the uh, notice of intent. And we agree, um, it would also work better because we could get the restoration plan uh, uh, approved prior to, uh, we have some timelines in there that we wanna do some replanting because of the, the species of concern. And uh, we wanna get uh, an area replanted by May 15th. So doing the restoration plan under the enforcement order allows that timeline to work much better. And then we wanna come back. Uh, we also want to present to you the agricultural aspect under the notice of intent. So first we want to withdraw the, the uh, uh, restoration plan from the notice of intent and, and have you put that in under the order of conditions. And since that wasn't on the agenda tonight, it can't be discussed. And so we're asking that that be uh, put on the agenda for April 14th. And then also we are in the process of putting together a, an agricultural a plan. I, I, I worded it such that we wanna, do wanna repair buildings. We do wanna uh, uh, and start doing agricultural land, uh, work on, resume doing agricultural work on the property. It was agricultural, I believe until about 10 years ago. And then, then it, 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 it fell out of uh, agricultural use. So it's not exempt. Um, and we are working with NRSCS uh, to develop a farm plan to incorporate. And we won't want to have that included as part of the notice of intent about what we intend to do with the land. There's a number of this, obviously we'd like to start haying it again and, and, and uh, working with it, but um, so we would like actually to have a, and there's also a forest cutting plan that's been submitted to DCR for, for the Northern portion that includes uh, stewardship mainly uh, with, I mean, that's approved by DCR. You, you have a right to review it and comment on it. Mm -hmm. um, so we would like to continue that hearing until April 14th when we'll hopefully we'll have more information on that and uh, I hope I didn't speak too much. Nope, I think that was great, David. So thank you very much. And I assume at that point, we will hopefully have letters from the agencies that we'll need as well. Right, um, right. So Stephanie, um, is there anything else that we need to cover with this one or are we okay to just move ahead and uh, can you give us a date and a time? The 14th, but a time. Sure, 14th. So I'm actually front loading that meeting a little bit. So um... I'm putting this one at 7.25 p.m. Okay. So looking for a motion for continuation. April 14th, 7.25. Moving to continue this hearing to April 14th, 7.25. Back in. Thank you. So looking for a voice vote. Anna. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Laura. Aye. And Jen. Aye. And I, for me as well. So thank you, David. We will see you in a few weeks. Thank you. And uh, looking forward to working with you on this. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Same here. Okay. So Kate and Kenny, my apologies for before, but now it is actually your turn again. So this is a continuation for request for determination for footbridges on Amherst College property. 
So I don't know if Kate or Kenny, if one of you uh, wants to just introduce yourselves again real quickly and then give us an update about where you are, they'd be much appreciated. Uh, hi, yep, uh, Kenny here, uh, Kenny and Kate Amherst College, um, working on replacement of, am I still there? Oh, there we go. Um, working on replacement of four bridges in our sanctuary lands. Okay. And any changes from, or what? what's the progress since last time or uh, what do we need to do at this point? So no changes since two weeks ago. Uh, two weeks ago, we did not have a quorum so we could not vote. Um, so we'll be representing in the hopes That's that right. we can vote. Okay. Yep, and so uh, Anna has to uh, recuse herself, but we have one, two, three, four. So we are barely there, but we are fully there. So, Perfect. okay. So if you wouldn't mind, um, just so that you know everybody is sort of up to speed, if you can just kind of let folks know where we're at, and then we can move forward from there. Sweet. Um, Stephanie can, oh, I do have share screen, cool. Um, all right. And can everybody see that? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Um, so Amherst College seeking request for determination on bridge replacements. Um, okay, so four bridges, um, site one, site two, site three, and site four, as seen in the picture for reference, site four is crossing Fearing Brook. A brief recap of everything that's happened for those who weren't here uh, March 10th, um, we did speak a little bit, um, but obviously there wasn't enough for a quorum, so here we are. Um, and yeah, we, we talked about this uh, last time once again, but uh, we now understand that a request for determination would give us a three-year provision to perform work. So um, that's good there. Um, here is site one. This is closest to Merrill Apartments along East Drive on Amherst, uh, on Amherst College. Uh, this is site two. site three, and this is site four, crossing Fearing Brook. We have since the last meeting um, made safety repairs. Um, I did not include pictures of those, but um, as you had stated, we could make structural repairs without um, request from the committee. All we did was replace a couple of the stringers on the left-hand side, um, did not impact either side. All stringers that are currently touching the ground remain as were. Um, and here are all the measurements. I'm assuming same as last time, everybody on the committee has had access to all these numbers? Correct. Excellent. Um, so uh, we're toggling back and forth still depending on contractor, whether they sit on the concrete diamond pier blocks or eight by eight timbers, um, but we're looking mostly at the idea of using uh, natural beam stringers as supports as you as is depicted in this picture. Um, and we did determine that unlike this picture, handrails would not necessarily be required per the committee. Correct. So here's one example of a bridge we have looked at. Either company would be rather similar, the difference being the um, what they rest on. But all bridges would be lengthened, raised, and meet 1.2, thankful. Um, and then the, the final note is that um, we do still need to hire a biologist to survey the area. We do understand, assume, a much bigger area than you would normally think be safe, as was um, Dave's suggestion. 
Excellent. Thank you, Kenny. So, Kate, anything else that you want to add from your side or? No. Okay. Um, and so obviously we'll open it up, see if we have any sort of general comments and remember that this is a request for determination. And so depending on how that vote goes, that would mean that either um, a notice of intent is not required or it will be required. And so that is part of our discussion that we need to um, come to terms with. So, um, Stephanie, do you have anything to add before we jump into it? Um, no, because I think you've had quite a bit of discussion around this project. So I don't know that there's anything I could contribute at this point, any perspective beyond what I've shared with you before. And I think Erin has shared her thoughts about this project as well, because it did initially, I think, come in when she was at the meeting, so. Yep. Okay. Yeah, Dave, this is the project that we spoke about at length, I guess, a few months ago, right? Um, I'm not quite sure. I mean, if it's, this well, is like, the only Amherst College one that's yeah, been in front yeah. of us for a while. And it sounds like not much, much has changed from our initial conversation. Is that right? But Kate, you're shaking your head. So I think you're, yeah. Um, Laura, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're thinking of the same one. So maybe you please let us step in and clarify any questions that you have since Kenny did do that pretty quickly. Um, did you present had, recently, did, did you both present something identical or did you present something uh, different in the, in the past number of weeks? We, we presented two weeks ago. Um, all, uh, we didn't have quite enough people here. Um, all of our measurements on bridges have been adjusted um, to meet minimum requirements. That was the, the biggest change. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that we, we did have the site visit with Aaron and Brett and um, Gignor and the, our, our very initial plan was simply to try to replace the bridges in their current lengths. And then we received the feedback that it would really be better and would improve the resource area if we could lift them up and lengthen them. Mm -hmm. And so then that raises the potential cost a lot. So we went up back and forth with contractors um, trying to figure out how to do that and how much that might cost. Um, and based on that, and then based on going back out and retaking measurements, we came back on March 10th with the revised dimensions. So the spreadsheet uh, that was part of what Kenny has and hopefully part of your packet um, yes. has the proposed dimensions that we hope will address concerns about the resource area itself. Um, I mean, I don't think there's any question that these are in resource areas, right? Um, one of them is over what I think is more of a drainage ditch than a than a stream, um, but the Fearing Brook definitely is a living stream. I was out there in these woods the other day. I saw some cute tree frogs. I think you know many things are alive and well in these resource areas, and so um, there's not really a question that we're in the resource area. The question is, are we doing this in a way that's going to improve things and not not harm mm -hmm. the resource? And so we tried to respond to the conservation's, uh, the commission's feedback on, on that. And so Got it. Okay. our hope is that uh, we would be able to move forward. I guess there were some students who were hoping to be involved in the bridge building. Um, we were hoping to do this as part of the bicentennial, which is 2021. Mm -hmm. So all of those considerations are, you know, hopes, but we totally mm -hmm. understand that it's your jurisdiction to decide, you know, how to interpret things and, and how best to move forward. Okay. Yeah, and one thing that's kind of funny with us, Kate, is um, even though it may have started off as a drainage ditch, it doesn't really, yeah, it, it's all sort of treated the same. Uh, it can be kind of funny some days, but um, it's just kind of how it rolls with the, with the bylaws and the Wetlands Protection Act. Yeah, I mean, we've actually been looking into the history of this whole area a little bit, and the whole thing was cleared in the 30s, and then yeah. brought back intentionally as a woodlot. And so it was initially extremely, uh, you know, used and mm -hmm. probably not a, not a whole lot was doing well in there. And it, it really has come back into what looks like a natural area, which is kind of neat. It is. Yeah, so Laura, did you have any other sort of comments or are you just trying to figure out where we're at? Yeah, no, uh, this is helpful, thank you. Okay, good. Um, so, Leroy or Jen, do you have anything? Uh, no. So, 
yeah. So we just have to decide if this is a negative determination or an NOI to be filed. Right. So there's not, I mean, I was very comfortable with the content as um, presented at the last meeting. Um, I think the plans are really good. It's just whether we need a full NOI or not. Right. Yeah. Correct? Yep. And that's what a lot of the discussion has sort of centered around. Um, NOI is what we've done when we've had similar circumstances on our lands, on CONCOM lands. So particularly the one over just west of 116, Yeah, uh, you know, for what that's worth, you know, thinking about precedent, thinking about, you know, those sort of issues. Um, there's definitely, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that this is an improvement. So um, there's nothing about that. Um, and last time we also did talk about what the relative pros and cons are of an NOI versus a request for determination. And overall, the NOI just gives us a bit more, <clears throat> has a bit more teeth to it. So it will actually be uh, recorded on the deed. And obviously Amherst College is going to do great work anyways, but still, um, you know, just to make sure that we're fulfilling our obligations as well. Yeah, I guess my, and the way I would land on that is it's less about like regulatory <laughs> traction as it is about consistency. I mean, um, if we for bridges on our conservation land ask the town to submit NOIs, I think um, for consistency, I think an NOI would be a good way to go. I also say that knowing that everything that Kate and Kenny have pulled together is enough for an NOI. So there's not a lot more work that would go into that application. Um, so I guess I, if I were un, putting undue, you know, <laughs> workload on <laughs> what is a good faith effort, then I would be more hesitant, but you guys have already done, you have everything you need um, and have gone above and beyond in terms of stream crossing standards. So um, I think it'll, it won't be that bad to put it together, I guess. Yeah, it would have been Very nice. <laughs> it would have been nice from the beginning if it was just submitted as an NOI. I know. A decision yeah. that you know it went one way. So, Kate. Yeah, Brett. I thank you. I I just want to respond to that briefly. I think that the big difference, as we understood it, is that we need to fully delineate wetlands um, in order to do the the full NOI and that would require us hiring a wetlands consultant for probably a few thousand dollars at minimum um, in order to do that and then start the process over again with notifying abutters and uh, different different fees. Um, am I wrong about that? Can you guys help us understand what additional delineation needs to be done for, for an NOI? Because I think for us, that's the that's something Kenny and I can't do on our own, basically. That was that was how it was described to us initially by Aaron when we had um, first spoke about the NOI. Um, and then when we, we actually, oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Um, when we had first talked about the NOI uh, with Aaron, that uh, she said delineations would be required, and we had also we had actually asked for clarity to see if we could. With the consultant that we were working with, we have been working with through this, um, they would have the ability to delineate based on vegetation and not soil type. And Aaron said that both would be required to file an NOI. That was really what held us back from going in that direction. That's, if I could, <laughs> I mean, to delineate a wetland, you do need to look at both the vegetation and the soils. That's how you define the wetland. Um, statutorily, that's how you define the wetland. Um, but that's not to say that then you would necessarily choose to go the lesser route um, so that you could skirt having to delineate the wetlands because the thing is you are in resource area and also you have habitat issues uh, as well. So you should have been guided to do a notice of intent right from the beginning. It, it shouldn't, I, and I know, um, I think Aaron had said that um, so I think she, she did say that initially and yeah. it, to, to mine and Kane's point, it was just, it was physically impossible to do that. And so for us to have been able to do anything, this was the route without this route, there is no route. That's our, that's our, our holdup. There, 
there are not funds to go in a different direction. Right. So, so and to delineate the wetland, um, I don't know when you say delineate everything, you would have had to delineate around the area that you were proposing to do the work. So you wouldn't necessarily have to go along the whole property and delineate every little wetland. You would just have to delineate the boundaries that are closest to where you would, adjacent to where you're doing the work. Um, so I don't know how extensive that would be. Um, so that's just the only input I'm gonna give. Can I, sorry, this is Jen. Can I ask a clarifying question on that? Cause I do remember in the first hearing on this when Aaron was, was on the hearing, we had the discussion about delineation and I remember specifically saying that it would be very difficult to separate out the different resource areas because it's all so low lying. Um, so li low lying with like kind of braided streams and what were formerly drainage ditches, but now we treat as streams. Um, and so there was kind of this assumption that we were in the resource area. Is there any, Stephanie, is there any precedent for saying, okay, can we just like, <laughs> I don't know, um, how do I phrase this? Can they assume they're in a resource area? Yeah, you can, and so there's, I'm sorry, go ahead, Jen. Keep yeah, that, that was it. That was what I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a solution that, um, cause we know that they're in the resource area. Is there a way to move forward with that information somehow? Yeah, it's the fact that you're in the, resource area and well I mean so yeah I mean there's there's a few ways I guess you could go with this yeah um you could you could issue a determination saying that they're doing work within a resource area but you're saying that it doesn't have any impacts to the resource area I'm not sure that's 100 percent true in this case given some of the work that has to be done um right. So, and the fact that it was in habitat, I mean, again, it, it, it wasn't totally an option, you know, to say that you can decide that it's a determination versus a notice because you don't right. necessarily have the funds to do the delineation. Um, I think the, the fact that you're in a resource area in and of itself, um, and knowing that there is some work that's going to impact the resource area, and it's it's minimal, but it's it's still impact. Um, to me, warrants the notice of intent. The other thing is, you did say that you weren't sure when you were going to do the work, and <clears throat> I mean, you'd have to you would have to do it within the three years because you can't you cannot extend a determination within order of conditions. You can, and I think you have most of the information that you need in the plan sets that I've seen. You've got a lot of that and, um, you know, I don't, I also don't know that you may be able to find a consultant who would be willing to actually do the delineation for you along those resource areas um, who might just do it and volunteer their time. And I've, it's happened. We've had, we've had consultants do that before. It would just be a matter of you seeing if you can find someone who'd be willing to do that for you. So anyway, that's all. I, I'm sorry, I said a lot, but that's what I have to contribute. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. So I'll go to Dave and then Kate. So this is, yeah. Um, I was gonna start off by saying I'm struggling with this, but I, I actually think I'm pretty clear on it. Um, again, I'm not a member of the commission, but um, I think there's been a lot of great points made, and and I think um, the two of you, um, Kate and Kenneth, you, you guys have made a, a really good faith effort on this. I do think some of the early advice you got, not from the town of Amherst, but outside the town of Amherst, probably um, time, energy, and resources could have been spent going right after the NOI, which would have been, I think, a more direct route to what you wanted to achieve. I also wanted to acknowledge, I think, you know, the commission did and, and Aaron did advise you on the, what well, really was the emergency, which was the, the Boeing uh, bridge, right? And so I think the commission said, yeah, go ahead, repair that bridge. What I struggle with, I think, is um, the precedent. I, I do worry about the precedent. I, I think if this were any other 
applicant. If this were the town of Amherst, we would, we would do a notice of intent. If this were the University of Massachusetts, we would do a, a notice of intent. If this were a, a private individual who wanted to cross a resource area, I think the commission would require a notice of intent. So I do worry about the precedent. The other thing, and I would look to, to you too as representatives of the college, my understanding is the college wants to do more work on the trail system in the sanctuary. So beyond these three bridges, three or four bridges. So what happens next year, the year after when, when the college comes back and says, we wanna do all this work. And in 2021, a notice of intent wasn't required. So I'm just, I'm just throwing this out there not to be, you know, create, you know, prob problems, but it, it um, you know, I, I think as Stephanie said, I think there are reasonable ways there may be a way to get wetland scientists uh, donated hours to do this. Um, we just went through this with town trails out in North Amherst, and you know, we ended up delinea delineating just the specific area where the bridges, these are bog bridges, they, these were not even bridges over, um, there might have been one bridge over an intermittent stream, but the other ones were bog bridging in resource area, and we ended up uh, the, the linear feet was thousands of linear feet, but the bridges, we really narrowed it down at Aaron's advice to just hiring somebody to delineate a very short portion of the area that um, was in a wetland resource area. So that's a long way of saying, I, I do worry a little bit about the precedent, although I, I commend you in, in the good faith effort you've made, but I, I do worry about kind of what, what precedent this sets moving forward, so. Thanks. Thank you, Dave. Kate? Sure, thanks. I think we're getting a clearer sense for where the commission is, is leaning now. Um, and I think that's helpful. Um, I think, Stephanie, you're right. We did receive some advice early on. And I think it, it was, um, I think Aaron was very clear. That's absolutely true. Um, and I think the outside advice that we received was that it's more along the lines of what you were saying in terms of there's the the RDA can be issued either because you're not in a resource area or because there isn't an impact. And so I think the question was, is this having an impact on the resource that's potentially negative? And I guess the it looks like um, you guys probably are going to require a notice of intent, which makes, I mean, it's totally your call. Um, I think it would help us to understand what you see as the possible negative impact so that as we if we if we are able to do that process that we can think around that so what what as we are fixing bridges what are the possible negative impacts that you're worried about um if i could kate i would just say that um first of all you're in estimated habitat and i think i said to you at the last meeting that alone could have triggered having to be to file a notice of intent. They don't typically review requests for determinations. So that alone was something that should have triggered the notice of intent. The second thing is that it's not saying that it's having um, a huge a negative impact on the resource area, but it's having impacts to the resource area. So if you're having to do any kind of um, cutting into the bank to sort of make room for the, you know, to make more room for footings, any of that work that you're doing, it has an impact. And it may not be huge, but it's still impact. And those things tend to have to be mitigated for. So when you do this under a request, the commission doesn't have all of those mechanisms that are in place to sort of do the things that address those issues. Um, the only way to do that is through the notice of intent. And there's no clear permitting pathway for natural heritage to do their review under a request. So I, I, I Aaron was very clear. And when I saw this, I had the exact same reaction. Why is this, as soon as I saw it, I said, why is this not a notice? So, and Aaron and I had a, a conversation about it. So, you know, I feel the same way. And I think she tried to steer you in that direction. Um, 
you know, and I, I understand and I, and I, again, you know, you're both, you've done such a great job and I hear you and it's, I think we're all struggling. You can hear us all struggling. It's like, we know what is the right thing to do. It's also hard because we know how earnest you both are and how hard you've worked to make this work as best you can. But the process is the process. And I, that's, I think where I was coming from in my guidance. And I think where Erin was coming in hers as well. Yeah, and I mean, there is definitely some impact that is happening there. I agree that overall it is gonna be a benefit. I mean, there's no doubt about that in my mind, but there is impact that is happening. So um, yeah, and for that property in North Amherst that Dave was talking about, if it makes you feel any better, Kate, um, we were, we were um, counseled to do a request for determination as well. And we rejected ourselves on the same one. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Or we required ourselves, yeah, to do an NOI. Okay. So, um, any other commissioners have thoughts or comments on this one? Or people from the public, or Kenny or Kate? Um, yeah, the only other comment I think that sort of came to my mind is the idea that this would cost thousands of dollars. I remember we kind of talked through that. And at one point, you guys reached out to some larger organizations and there's plenty of smaller organizations. Yeah, if you can get it done for free, that's great. Um, but there's plenty of sort of local smaller organizations that I don't know their costs, but they're gonna be much lower than some of the big national ones. Granted, if your budget is zero, that doesn't matter. Um, but there are some that are much more reasonable. And we have a list of consultants. I don't know if you ever got that from Aaron, but we do have a list of consultants and we always um, guide people to, to call them because their um, fees do range quite significantly. So, yeah, do you have something, Kate? Sure, let me just explain quickly that, yeah, I think we were, we were pitched a, a project in the beginning to fix a couple of bridges for a total cost of something like $10,000. And obviously that was not realistic, right? In order to get the length that we need, in order to get the, the permitting that we need, that, that doesn't seem realistic. I think what we face is, can, can we credibly say to the college that, um, that it's worth investing so much in these bridges or it probably, it may end up being better just to fix them because, uh, I mean, to temporarily fix the carpentry. The reason is that we've experienced lots and lots of tree falls in this area over the, the past two years, especially, you know, the last two years out of the last 10 years that I've been walking around in those lands, so many trees have come down and three of the bridges were damaged by trees and that's extremely likely to keep happening. So it is kind of an expensive proposition if to keep keep doing that over and over again. And there's, uh, Dave, David was absolutely right that we had, we had hopes to, you know, renew some of the other trails. I, I think that we will be, we probably will be limited in terms of just doing mostly signage at, at this point. Cause I think, yeah, it does, it doesn't seem realistic, I think. Yeah, I mean. So I think, that's okay, that's such is life. I mean, Amherst College does have resources, so it's a question of how they choose to spend them. So, um, I mean, unless you're claiming hardship, and then that would be a different issue. But I think that might be a tough one. So, um, so Dave, are you trying? Do you have you're leaning in there? A little bit. I mean, and and to both of you, I mean. Um, I've been working on kind of land and trail projects for a long time. And, and, and again, you know the college better than any of us. So we, we, we should stay in our lanes, but part of, you know, and I, I know the sanctuary well, having grown up in Amherst and I now live, you know, five minutes from the sanctuary. But um, part of me thinks that actually making a bigger project, pitching a bigger project to the college as opposed to, you know, and maybe you guys have already done this, but pitching that, that the sanctuary is an incredible resource for the college students, faculty, you all know this better than I do because you work there, but um, I'm just saying maybe this is, 
this is not a fifteen twenty thousand dollar project. This is a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar project to top to bottom make the sanctuary a showplace for alumni, staff, faculty, students, uh, and the community. So I, I don't know. Sometimes in my work, making a project, bundling things and making it bigger is sometimes easier to fundraise than it is for small potatoes. So I just offer that as something that, that I've used in the past. Um, and I'd be happy to support you in that. And um, you know, I, I work with the college on other issues, but I, I think I wouldn't be saying that if I didn't think the sanctuary should be a showplace and something the college can really point to and say, wow, this is an asset. And right now I'm not sure, you know, it's kind of a, you know, it's a nice trail system, but it's, it's not like, wow, there's not a wow factor. So for what it's worth, but I think- yes. Yeah, I don't know if Kenny wants to respond to that at all. Um, I, I think you're totally right. We will try, we will keep trying. We have been trying, we will keep trying. My response is this was that bitch. <laughs> um, that's exactly what we've been doing. Again, I, I work with people at all levels in the college and I'm happy to help you make that pitch for what an asset it truly is for the college and it should be. And across the country, many, many schools like Amherst College have natural areas that you know they really put money into and it, it pays dividends with alums, et cetera, down the road. So. Yeah, and just like what you're trying to do, Kate, I mean, I think that not to put words in your mouth, but I think one of the things you're trying to do is make this a better asset for the students first off. Um, and yeah, I mean, that would just be, I so applaud you for doing that where you don't have to, but yeah, I feel like we're being obstructionist to a certain extent and uh, I'll apologize for that, but I don't think there's, yeah, I mean, we just have to do what we have to do as well. So I wish you luck. Yeah, uh, we, we totally appreciate that you're doing your job and protecting the resource and you know upholding the law and that and trying to set precedent. And yeah, Stephanie, totally understand that. Yeah, you're trying to guide on that. We do hear hear that. So yeah, and so as Dave is saying, if there's stuff that we can do to help, please let us know. Um, but okay, so are there? Wait, wait, sorry, can I ask a policy question? So please. Am, am I allowed to help? in any way, like because I'm in the middle? Can I either like, because I'm abstaining help from like the Amherst College side without being a commissioner or vice, I don't even know if they'd want me, but like, I mean, I, can I can I help in any way or no? So we who can, are you Who are you asking that to? So I think Dave, that could... I think, or maybe Stephanie. I oh, know we could explore that. Um, there are ways for, um... Uh, appointed members of boards and, and committees to file um, 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 acknowledgements. Uh, it's filed with the town clerk that you may have a real or perceived conflict of interest, but you've recused yourself from votes, et cetera, et cetera, so that you may participate in the following things. So let's be in touch on that. And, sure. we, and you could even get, um, you, there's a, a free way to call the ethics commission in Massachusetts and they can guide you through that in you know seven or eight minutes. I can happily say I've never had to call the ethics commission before. So yeah, it's a very yeah. it's just a very common thing to get a little advice <laughs> on something like this. All right. Thank yeah. you. I'll I'll reach out to you, Dave. Thanks. Sure. Okay. Anything else on this one? Okay. So if not, I think we are finally ready for a vote. Um, and again, so we have in front of us a request for determination and the, um, Stephanie will help us with the basic wording, but basically, um, you know, do we determine that there is the potential for impact and will, is a NOI required for this? So All right, Stephanie, Stephanie, give me the wording and I'll, sure. I'll take it. Um, so you're looking to, um, issue a positive determination that the, um, area is a resource area and that you're requiring require the filing of a notice of intent. Okay. So we are looking. Um, you can say a positive determination one if you want just to make it easy. Yeah, we're making a positive determination that the area is a resource area and that we need to file a notice of intent. Um, I think that's all I have to say, right? Yep, that sounds good. So looking for a second. Seconded. Okay, so looking for a voice vote. So Leroy. Aye. Laura. 
Aye. Jen? Aye. And I as well. So I don't think this is quite the decision you're looking for, but at least it's a path forward. Um, and so if there's anything that we can do, please let us know. So and hopefully we will see you in front of us soon with the NOI for this. So. Thank you both. Thank you all. So any questions? Yeah, just get in touch with um, Stephanie or yeah, soon enough, it'll be Aaron. It'll be Aaron, but um, I'm sure if you reach out to her, she'd be more than happy to, to talk you through this. And if you wanted to sort of bundle it with the other work too, she'd be happy to talk you through that. Okay. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thanks. Okay, so that is our last official hearing for this evening, um, but we still do have some other items of business. So Stephanie, should we go on to our certificate of compliance? Yes. Yep, and Katie is here. I will let her in. Katie, I've promoted you to panelist, so you'll have the ability to share your screen as well. Yep, and Katie, if you can also just introduce yourself and then give a brief background. Um, on... Sure, so my name is Katie Kinsella. I'm a professional wetland scientist and I'm with VHB and I'm here tonight representing Eversource for the Owens Pond uh, request for a certificate of compliance. Excellent. Yep, so um, I was just asked to be here to answer any sort of questions that you might have. So I didn't prepare a formal presentation, but in the meantime, I did throw a few slides together if you want me to just run through them quickly. Yep, if you have something prepared, um, sure. yeah, please go ahead and share. And if not, we, uh, we did get, receive a copy of the materials you sent uh, sure. as well. So again, I'm here tonight um, representing Eversource for the Owens Pond Request for Certificate of Compliance. Um, so a brief project background, the order of conditions for this was issued way back in 2011, and it authorized um, various mitigation measures throughout this property, um, including replacing a failed engineering outlet control with a natural stream channel, um, enhancing the edge of the pond and controlling invasive species, um, replacing a failed culvert with at a uh, restored intermittent stream channel, and um, creating a, an inner and outer floodplain zone, so basically wetland creation, and then installing wildlife habitat features throughout the site like uh, turtle basking platforms, nesting boxes, and um, artificial snags. So this is just a view of the features that were created on the site and the different zones. So if you received the copy of the, the wetland mitigation report for 2020, it talked about different zones that we had to monitor. And so you can see here these PE4 zones, these are all your pond enhancement zones where there were plantings done. Um, this one over here, the R1C1, this is the restored intermittent channel here. Um, just beyond just landward or upland of the pond enhancement zones. You see there's these invasive control species zones here, this IC1, IC2, IC3. Um, this is the restored natural stream channel here. So the failed outlet was here. This was removed and then this whole area was restored. Um, and then this FL1 and FL2 here were the inner and outer floodplain zones that served as our BVW um, replication. So the Amherst CONCOM issued a partial COC on November 15th in 2013. And what that partial COC did was it said that everything was um, constructed according to the order of conditions and the NOI, and that the only thing that was remaining to fully close out the project um, was the long-term monitoring that was required. And so when we submitted this 2020 report, that was the last report according to the order of conditions and, and various permit conditions um, to close that out. So we completed monitoring in 2014, 15, 16, 18, and 20. 
Um, DEP signed off on the water quality cert back in 2016, and the Army Corps of Engineers recently signed off, um, stating again that the, the mitigation was successfully implemented and we met all the permit conditions. So um, here in front of you tonight to answer any questions that you might have, and um, I guess I'll, I'll let you take it from there. Thank you, Katie. Um, so one thing that you mentioned in there, Katie, was that the original or the older um, flood control or water control structure was removed. I thought that's actually still in place and it's to the west of the current one. Or is that a different structure? Well, there's still, there's still, I guess there is still a structure there, but we did restore that channel. So it, it increased connectivity to, um, I forget what the name of the stream is, down, downstream there. Improved fish habitat. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. It you basically rerouted. I just wanted to make clear that 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 old structure is still there, just no longer operable, for lack of a better word. Yeah. I could clarify that if you want, Brett. Um, Please do. If you go back to the, could you go back to the? Um, oh, sure. Sure. This one. Oh, you are no longer sharing your screen. Oh, let me reshare. So yeah, over near the new stream channel. So that area um, before this project happened, um, when we kind of visioned it with Eversource, that was actually the emergency overflow for Owens Pond. So there was a very subtle channel there. And the the old um, flow structure is actually the little, the little kind of bump on the um, on the dike. I, um, Yes, just to the south. Just to the south. If you move along the blue section, uh, the, the other, right, oops, you just, there. right there. That yeah. is the old flow structure. So all of the water used to flow through that. It got dammed up by beavers. It was, you know, not functioning well. So we really envisioned this project with Eversource to be to reconnect and get a natural connection back to the Fort River. And so that that old flow structure was actually, I, I think that was completely filled. Um, we need to deal with, with the other side of it now, but it virtually no water flows through that. Um, so yeah, this was a great project. It added, you know, terrific habitat, added two bridges uh, for the trail system here, and most importantly provides some movement both downstream and upstream for fish and other critters along that, um, that new um, a new enhanced uh, stream channel there. So. Yep, thank you, Dave. Yeah, and I think it's those old structures that are no longer operable. Those are the ones that kind of trigger it in my mind. Yeah, it was interesting. We got Boyd Kennard, who's, who's quite a, a famous uh, fisheries biologist in this area involved in this. And, and he talked about um, lamp, sea lamprey and American eel now being able to move at least this far upstream. There is a perch culvert at the eastern end of Owens Pond, and that's that's a project for another day. Yeah, and overall, I think, um, yeah, I wasn't too familiar with this project beforehand, but right now I think it looks really nice. And yeah, that green hatched area right now, that is beautiful snake habitat. Uh, I don't know if anybody's been out there. There's, I, you know, I've counted hundreds of snakes in that area at one time before. Hmm. So kind of fun. Little gardener sna garter snakes, but still fun. Just balls of them. So, um, any sort of comments or questions from the commission or anybody from the public? I have a question, um, and you don't need to pull up the picture again. But I know that there be there have been a lot of kind of natural small paths made where people are trying to access the water along there. Is that a consideration when you think about the plantings that you've done, or kind of the future around what's paths that have evolved uh, out of use, not a, out of intention? Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't think it was a design consideration when this mitigation project was originally designed. And like you said, or hinted at, people are going to find a way to get to the waterfront, right? Um, they want to get there. And it is, um, I guess if it's more intentional, you can guide them to where you want them to be, as opposed to them trampling vegetation. Um, and just to create their own path. So, it, you know, it can be a consideration in the future and for, for other projects. 
Yeah, I think that's that was exactly what I was thinking is like, how can we maybe embrace one little piece of like, oh, it hurts my heart to avoid yeah. the, the full on trampling of, of the full area. Yeah. yeah, and so this, I guess, where the old, oh, I'm not sharing anymore, but that bump out where the old structure was um, is a great spot. People, it's open, people go there all the time. I've seen, you know, dogs jump off of that into the pond. Um, but yeah, it is sometimes helpful to actually create a, a trail system to guide them and keep them right. where you want them to be. Yeah, but yeah, you're you're absolutely correct. It's a future consideration. It's not a, yeah. I was curious if it had come up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so probably at that point, it would actually um, come into the purview of us. So, oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And so that's more of a question for Dave. Or yeah, um, Dave. I know Dave is very aware of those issues. So. Fix all the problems. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, but yeah, we are looking for a um, certificate of compliance here. And so, I mean, everything that was outlined in there, I thought it was a very thorough report that was given, um, that was provided. Uh, I didn't see any um, issues, but I don't know if anybody else did. I'm happy to move it unless there are. Okay, yeah, why don't you go ahead, please. All right, so I move that we issue a certificate of compliance for the Owens Pond work to Eversource. Is that who I'm sending it to? Or am I just issuing it? You can just issue it. I'm just issuing for it. Owens Pond. Thank you for Owens Pond. Thanks, Stephanie. Looking for, thank you. Okay, so looking for a voice vote. Anna? Aye. Leroy? Aye. Laura? Aye. Jen? Aye. And I as well. So thank you very much, Katie. Um, All right. So we'll be in touch with the final paperwork. Great. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Okay. Bye. bye. Thank you, Katie. You're welcome. Okay. So just moving down the list that we have on our agenda, the next one on there is just Canton Avenue. Um, and so, Stephanie, have you heard anything from um, from those people? So I know no, just I haven't. And I, in your there. packet, I. Um... I gave you a copy of the um, latest enforcement that was issued that had to be issued under the bylaw because there's no mechanism for fining under the State Wetlands Protection Act. Uh, we can only do it under the bylaw. Okay. So, um, so you have that information, but I haven't heard anything since that's been issued. Yep, and so for any commissioners who weren't here last time, uh, the commission has um, set our first fine and memorable in, yeah, in recent <laughs> memory. Um, and so it's set at $300 a day until flagging is installed. Um, Correct. Yep. Um, I was talking to one of the neighbors on that property and they did notice somebody yesterday, I think it was, walking around back there, but that's neither here nor there. They don't even know who or who they were or what they were doing there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Been completely unconnected. Okay, um, so why don't we just keep on moving? Um, and so the next one is for our good old friend, P Pomeroy Court. Right, so that was um, another emergency cert for, sorry, I'm just opening it up myself. Um, yep. And uh, so what happened was um, we got a call from, or got contacted from Ruth Callahan um, there had been some folks that were going out and sabotaging the traps, so they weren't able to do the work that they needed to do. They weren't able to breach um, because they had to deal with the trapping issue. So they finally had to keep replacing them. They finally found something that would work. And so uh, we had to issue another emergency cert just to give them the time frame with which to be able to do that. So, um, and it's been done, I think I... If I didn't put it in your packet, I meant to because I got notification that they had done the trapping um, and so uh, and followed through with the breaching as well. So I can I'll make sure that gets into your packet for next time. Okay, so at this point they have removed euphemism for kill the beavers. Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay, and so uh, if that is the case, unless anybody has any questions, we'll be looking for a a motion to uh, ratify the emergency cert for Pomeroy Court. I do have a question. I mean, sorry, and I apologize, I know it's late. Um, when people are, are um, 
damaging traps. Is there anything that we can put out there explaining why we're doing it? So they know like this isn't our first attempt at, at dealing with the beavers here and that it's like we've tried, this is the last resort. And I'm assuming it's a welfare thing, but maybe I'm, maybe I'm off. Um, any, I, like just to explain why, I don't know. Dave, I defer to you on that one. Yeah, no, it's a great question, Anna. Um, yeah, I think it's an animal animal welfare, you know, somebody who knows what's happening and right. cares about, about mammals in this case, beavers. Um, honestly, I've, I've never, I'm not aware that we've had people um, uh, spring the traps before. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was kind of a new one for me. Um, we could talk to the people at, you know, I don't, it's hard because we're not shadowing them doing their work. We're not out in the marshes. Right. With them. Um, we, I suppose we could provide something on down letterhead, you know, as we move forward, if, if we do need to trap. And again, I think, you know, we're in a public meeting here. You know, this is something that we, none of us like to do nor want to do, but it, it sometimes comes down, like in the case of Pomeroy Court, comes down to the welfare of people, their houses, their property, and access for emergency vehicles when that road floods. So, well, I suppose yeah, what do is provide something on town letterhead for the trappers to put out there. As, as yeah, because well. yeah, I mean, I'm wondering if it's possible people also didn't know it was a town. You know, like did, if there's no context given, then yeah, very possible. Yeah, yeah, then they're like, oh, someone's trapping. That's not, you know, I mean, I, I'm reaching, but I, I do think like. If there, if it's possible for us to put more information when we do things like this, just like yeah. even literally on the traps, you know, saying like, we're working on not flooding this road anymore, um, and this is the only way that we know how to do it. Well, I think it's a reasonable request and and one we should try to work on in the future. Um, uh, yeah, they could be laminated so at least yeah. they have some couple of weeks of life before sure. moisture and dirt and weather get to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good suggestion. Thanks. I'm all for that, but these people probably, you know, I'm not sure how effective it's going to be. I mean, these traps should not be visible from the road anyways. I assume that they're putting them in relatively discreet places. These people know, yeah, I mean, that's not easy to find these traps. <laughs> I know. I just want to, I want to assume best intent and make sure we're doing everything we can to explain kind of why and also just, yeah, just in general. But. Yeah, it's a good educational opportunity. Mm -hmm. Sure. Love those unfortunate one so okay yeah any other sort of comments on this one i mean and this is a persistent one i mean was it every six months we deal with All this one. and so this isn't going to solve it either the so beavers of pomeroy are... court sounds like a terrible mystery novel to me at this point but like it's <laughs> something about that title <laughs> so i thought it was a new punk band that you're starting up Ooh, <laughs> great idea <laughs> Okay, um, so if nothing else, then um, looking for a motion to ratify. I move we ratify the emergency certification for uh, Pomeroy Court. Is that all I have to say? For Anna. Okay, thank you. So, uh, voice vote, Anna? Aye. Laura? Aye. Leroy? Aye. Jen? Aye. And I as well. So, we are done with that one. Um, and so then we are just on to other miscellaneous business, Stephanie. So monitoring reports, everything looked fine that I looked at. Um, but is there anything that you wanted to highlight there or any other items? No, I actually, I don't have anything. Okay. Does anybody else have anything that they wanted to add for today? Just thanking Stephanie for stepping in and doing such a great job and helping us. I appreciate it. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. I don't yes. know if we need to make a motion. Yeah. I second that formal. too. <laughs> yeah, it needed to be on the record, documented. <laughs> That's why I said it before we ended. <laughs> we need to vote oh, on that one you. too, or we're good. <laughs> favor of thanking Stephanie. All right. We're all in favor, unanimous. Yes. Thank you. Well, again, like I said, it was my pleasure. I was happy to do it. So, okay. Okay. So uh, with that, I am looking for a motion to adjourn. No, I was going to do a Larry. Whoa. Uh, I move to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Second. Okay, Anna. Aye. 
Laura? Aye. Leroy? Aye. Jen? Aye. And I as well. So we are all done. So uh, rest up for next time. Apparently we have a bit of a doozy coming up. You do uh, a really long one. Sorry. <laughs> so we'll do our best to move through it as quickly as we can. Thank you all. Take Thank care you all. Good night. Good night. Good night.